In this video, I'm going to show you how I ate 6,000 calories in one hour. If you want to control what you eat, control your body, and control your life, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. I used to binge a lot. If you've watched this channel, then you kind of know my story. If you haven't watched the video on my story, then go back and listen to that one because it's definitely worth listening to. I would say 6,000 calories was my typical binge. Sometimes it was five, sometimes it was seven or eight. Sometimes it went into the stratosphere like 9,000, 10,000, but I only did that a few times over 10 years. Uh, I'll tell you how I did that in just a minute, but 6,000 was kind of like my average. And usually it was two hits. So I would do something in the morning and then I would do something at night. But sometimes I would binge all at once and I could easily hit 6,000 in about an hour. Whether it was two hits or just one episode in one day, um, I would only it would only take me an hour of to total time to actually achieve that. It's really not that hard because I ate a lot of stuff that was dense in calories and when you eat stuff that's high in fat and high in sugar, it's really not that hard to hit 6,000 calories, especially when you're eating at a fast pace. First question is why did I binge? I've covered this in previous videos, but the reason why is because I was highly motivated. That's what starts it all. It starts with a thought, an impulse, maybe this idea. It doesn't just start like you have to have the idea in the first place because there is a time in my life in fact most of my life where i didn't have these thoughts i didn't want to do it it never even occurred to me there's probably other drugs that would make me feel really good i just have no motivation to do it but once i started when i was about 23 years old my brain recorded it it realized that it was very rewarding to do that and when I, whenever I binge, I would release endorphins in my brain. Now you get endorphins whenever you feel feelings of elation. Maybe you accomplish something, or maybe you're kissing your girlfriend or whatever, and you get those endorphins in your head and your brain remembers the experiences that create that feeling. So it needs another chemical to make that happen. And that chemical is dopamine. Dopamine is sometimes considered the the pleasure chemical or the feel-good chemical, that's not entirely accurate. Dopamine makes you pursue something. So maybe you want to watch your favorite show, maybe you want to see something, maybe you want to have your favorite food, uh, maybe you want to do something that's very exciting, very stimulating, you get that dopamine rush because you just, you have to have it. I'll give you another good example in our modern age is the cell phone. Whenever your cell phone dings, you know, bing, like that, or you get some notification, your brain immediately releases dopamine because you know that there's something there. Maybe it's a message from your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe your best friend, or maybe it's a message you've been waiting for for a while. And then your phone dings and you, you're like, oh, I got I to gotta get that message. And that's why when a phone dings, you immediately some, see somebody pull their phone out of their pocket because that's dopamine. Uh, dopamine is just there to motivate you to take action and to obtain some reward. But when you actually consume the reward, it's endorphins. Okay, enough neuroscience. You didn't come here for a neuroscience class, but I wanted to make that clear. You have to have some level of motivation in order to do something that's really damaging. This is the problem for a lot of drug users. They have a lot of motivation. Uh, they get a lot of dopamine. They think about that drug all the time. Well, it's the same with food or even alcohol or porn or whatever it is. Um, you remember your brain remembers how good it felt to consume it and so then it releases a chemical to make you pursue it again second question is what did I binge on what didn't I binge on is a better question to ask you name it chips crackers hummus um, ice cream frozen burritos chipotle some fast food did I mention ice cream yet yeah I think I did <laughs> I've binged on some weird stuff like barbecue sauce um, I've eaten five or six sweet potatoes in a row I also remember eating an entire can of big beans with white rice now you would think why would you binge on that well if you think about it it has a lot of salt a lot of starch and a little bit of sugar and it was really easy and cheap to make and it was very rewarding frozen burritos were always good one of my favorite binges was the frozen burrito followed with ice cream so I got that that salt and then I finished the whole binge with some sugar. What could be better? Okay, but let's talk about the things I binged on the most. I would say the first one, first candidate here is peanut butter, especially the creamy kind. 
uh, especially the kind that had a lot of trans fat. Uh, Jif was the best. I don't know what it is about Jif. Maybe because I knew it was super unhealthy. Maybe because I didn't have to stir it and it just had that unique texture, but it didn't really matter. As long as it was peanut butter and it was creamy and I could just open it, I would literally eat an entire thing. Well, the problem is one serving of this, which is two tablespoons, it's 16 grams of fat. You multiply that by, let's see, 14, that's almost 200 grams of fat in this one little jar. That's why peanut butter is such a diet bomb. As satiating as, satiating as it is, excuse me, um, this is a lot of calories and it was very easy to overeat this, especially when I was distracted and watching something else. Speaking of distraction, I never binged without distraction. It was almost like husband and wife lock and key. You had to have both at the same time. I could never just sit down and not look at something else. I was always watching a YouTube video or I was reading a blog or I was reading a message form or something. I wasn't really paying attention. I wasn't really consuming it. I wasn't really learning or absorbing anything, but it was just this automatic behavior. If I'm going to binge, I need to distract myself with something. I remember one time I challenged myself to binge without any sort of distraction whatsoever and I just couldn't do it. It wasn't fun anymore. If I wasn't distracting myself from the binge, it was like it wasn't nearly as fun. Maybe because I realized how disgusting it was and so I just didn't want to do it anymore. But peanut butter, man, peanut butter was the worst. I don't eat a lot of peanut butter anymore. I just don't have a lot of use for it. Um, once in a while, it's it's okay, but there was a time in my life where this was my arch nemesis. Now, the other one was the good old Cliff Bar. Um, these are cheap, they're chewy, they're kind of gooey too. Now this flavor, sweet and salty, this is a relatively new flavor. So when I was at the peak of my binge eating career, if you want to call it that, um, this, this flavor did not exist, but there were a bunch of other flavors back then. I would literally, so this is, this is true, I would sometimes eat these in the store and I would get to the checkout. <laughs> I'll, I, was, I would put the wrappers on the like the, the conveyor belt or whatever. And the cashier was like, wow, you were really hungry, weren't you? I was like, yeah, I was. I That was really embarrassing, actually. Uh, eventually, I developed enough willpower to not do that. But sometimes I would get into the car and I would just eat five, six in a row on the way home and by the time I got home there were just cliff bar wrappers all over the car. The other one, um, this is a Luna bar, blue blueberry bliss. I know this is like supposed to be for women. I don't know what really makes it for women. So I never really felt embarrassed um, to eat a Luna bar, but I would eat this flavor, eat like an entire box it is six to a box. I don't know what it was about this particular flavor. It was only this one. Uh, but it goes to show you how important flavor is and and reward and texture and color too maybe it's the blue color that made me want to eat it i don't know or maybe it was the name but food manufacturers do a very good job of finding names textures and colors that make you want to eat more believe me that this wrapper and this texture and the name it's all intentional it wasn't just random. They didn't just say, hey, let's call it Blueberry Bliss. Like, they probably tested multiple names and multiple uh, logo images, and they tested multiple textures, and they found that one that produced the greatest hit. Well, apparently, Cliff Bar did a good job because I probably had 2,000 Cliff Bars. Oh, no, wait. Probably way more than that, like three to 4,000 if I had to guess since I was 20. I had my first one when I was 20. Didn't binge on them at the time, but. Um, yeah, I would easily eat six or seven in a row. And then I found other types of energy bars out there. There's so many. There, there's at least 200 different energy bars these days. Some are better than others. Some are more bingeable, if that's a word, um, than others. But I definitely found my favorite flavors. And energy bars, peanut butter, and probably ice cream were my big three. And then frozen burritos. I finally found those when I was in grad school. And I would eat five or six in a row. I don't have one right here, but... You kind of get the point. You know, the Amy's frozen burrito. I don't know if it was a combination of oil and salt and starch all in one, and then it was hot, and it was, I felt like I was having a homemade meal, even though it was frozen food. Um, but that's just, that's bachelor life, right? Sweet and salty was always a good combination. I like sweet stuff, but even this, this Cliff Bar has five grams of fat, so it's not just pure carbohydrates and it does have some protein, as if that matters, but, um, I always had the, I always paired my food. I never just ate 
pure sugar, which leads me to another point. I don't think sugar is as addictive as they say it is. I never once binged on stuff like Skittles or Starburst. It just wasn't that fun. Like, it's just pure sugar. Sometimes I would have soda, which is pure sugar, um, but that definitely wasn't my favorite. My favorite was always the food that have, had a combination of fat and sugar, and I think that's that's the real danger with the modern food supply is, is that we've taken sugar and combined it with fat, and that doesn't occur a lot. But when you take combinations of fat and sugar, so fat plus sugar, um, you get a lethal combination. Other bingeable foods were M&Ms, especially the peanut butter kind. I could easily eat an entire bag of this in one sitting. I would study or read or try to pay attention to something, which I never did. <laughs> But I would open the bag and I would just munch and munch and munch. And the next thing you know, the whole bag is gone. I did the same with trail mix too. Trail mix comes in this big bag. It's like a, I forget how many grams, like 700 grams or something like that. And I would easily just eat the whole thing because it was that salt, that salty and sweet flavor all in one, you know, salted peanuts plus raisins and some M&Ms and some chocolate chips. Another good one was cookies, especially the chewy kind. I could just eat cookies all day. Cookies are so good. Um, these Walmart cookies are amazing, by the way, but the white chocolate macadamia, you know, raisin, peanut butter, pumpkin, <laughs> chocolate chip, whatever it was. My favorite ice cream, if you can believe it, was Breyers Cherry Vanilla Ice Cream. I don't know why, it just was. Everybody's different, everybody has their, their preferences, which makes the human palate really interesting because one person might like something and another person might hate it. For example, I hate cheese. Some people love cheese and they can eat cheese with anything. I absolutely hate it. Never once binge on anything with cheese. If I were stranded on an island with cheese, I probably would just starve to death. I remember I ate 10,000 calories one time. 10,000, think about that. That's three, just over three days of food. I eat about 3,000 a day. So let's just say I was really active that day. So that's at least three days of food. I felt horrible after that. How did I do it? I didn't do it by eating carrots and black beans. I guarantee I didn't do that. I usually ate stuff like this. You know, this is, let's see, this is 1500 calories for the bag, or I would eat seven or eight cookies. You know, I would buy the, the plastic case of cookies and there's 15 cookies in it. How, how long does it take to eat that? It doesn't take any time at all. Or I would eat an entire carton of ice cream it adds up really fast, especially if I started in the morning and I finished at night, um, I could easily hit 10,000. Now I didn't do that very often. Usually it was like five or 6,000. Usually what happened was I was, I was be okay during the day and then I would get home and I would binge on like five or 6,000 or something like that. That, that was a typical binge. No one binge was ever the same. I, even though I binge probably 1,000, 1,500 times in my life, um, no one binge was ever the same. Everyone was a little different. The timing was different. The, the composition was different. The craving that I had was different. Sometimes I would go get fast food or like a milkshake. Sometimes I would just have convenience food like cookies. Sometimes I would have rice and beans. Yes, rice and beans. I had been binging on healthy stuff. I would eat multiple potatoes in a row or I would eat an entire tub of guacamole or I would eat an entire tub of hummus and I would combine that with pita chips. Sometimes I would eat 15 or 20 dates in a row. Dates are really high in sugar. They just have that, that chewy texture that my mouth really loves. The point is no one episode was the same. I was always seek seeking something else. And if I got tired of one food, I would just find something else. It was like playing whack-a-mole at Chuck E. Cheese. Once you take care of one problem, then you have two more problems. That's that's how binge eating was. If I satisfied one craving or one craving disappeared, then two more cravings appeared. Another thing about binging is I always did it in secret. I never wanted to be with anybody when I did it. When I was with other people, I would always put on a show. I would always get the salad and you know the fish and the grilled vegetables. Everybody thought I was eating healthy, even though I didn't look healthy, but uh, it was always what I did in secret that was the problem. Because how can you binge in front of somebody? Like, it's, it's embarrassing. You don't want anybody to see that. They're going to think you're disgusting or you have some problem or some eating disorder, which is true. But uh, I didn't want anybody to know that. So sometimes the best part of my day was coming home and just binging all alone. It seems so pathetic and sad, and it is. Um, but a lot of people are doing that. There's a lot of people out there who just they dream about that next 
that next binge, that next episode. It's like the most comforting part of the day just to be all alone and consume all this crap and to just watch your favorite TV show or some YouTube video. It's hard to believe that's what I used to look forward to and it was just a habit. I would come home at night and I was all alone. I didn't have any obligations. I had accomplished my goals for the day and now it was time to relax and just binge on a bunch of food and watch some random videos and just have a good time. It's okay to relax and have a good time. It's not okay to abuse yourself. And that's what an eating disorder is. It is a form of self abuse in every way. Flooding your body with six or 7,000 calories in one day is definitely not something you should do. It's definitely not something you should do habitually over many years, which is what I did. I probably binged thousand times in my life. So thousand times, that's, that's a lot. You shouldn't even do it once. I've binged a thousand times, but I'm still here and I'm actually healthier than I've ever been. Even though I've binged a thousand times, I've never been healthier. My metabolic rate is still really good. I'm burning about 3000 a day and I'm not even that big of a person. I'm like 130, maybe 130, 135, somewhere in that range. Um, so I'm not that big of a person, but I'm still burning a lot. I didn't wreck my metabolism, as they say. Um, I'm lifting more, I feel better, I feel healthier than I've ever been. So if you are binging or you have some eating disorder, don't feel like all is lost and it's too late. You can absolutely turn it around and you can start making changes today. You haven't wrecked your health. Your body's a lot more resilient than that, especially if you're young. It's never too late to make changes. How did I recover from binges? Well, the first part kind of sucked. I mean, the first few hours after a binge, I felt terrible, I was bloated. Sometimes it was so bad. My stomach was descended so much that I couldn't lie down on the bed. I literally had to walk back and forth for an hour just so I could digest enough and then I could go to bed. Sometimes I was just so tired um, I could sleep through the pain. Seriously, that's how bad it was sometimes. Uh, the next day I would wake up, I would feel okay, but I would just feel so heavy and so disgusted. And I would look in the mirror or step on the scale and I would hate what I saw because I knew what I was doing, and so it wrecked my self-esteem, it wrecked my body image. Um, I, did, I felt like I couldn't even perform basic tasks anymore. I mean, a little kid can feed himself, and here I was, 25, 30 years old, and I couldn't feed myself. I always worked out when I binged. I think part of it was I felt like I had to because I'd eaten all that. It's like, well, now I need to burn something, right? And, I, of course, I had all that excess energy, so... Um, I would go on the Stairmaster for an hour, sometimes two hours, which uh, made me even less productive during the day. So when, I, when you consider all the time I spent obtaining the food and eating it and cleaning it and then working out, it was a massive drain. No wonder I struggled in school and, and life. Um, eating disorders are a drain. They're a mental drain. They're a physical drain. There's just, there's nothing good about them. I remember I realized that after seven or eight years. I remember I thought to myself, what is good about this? Other than that 30 minute rush, that rush of endorphins, there was nothing good about it. It added nothing to my life. It was a physical and psychological drain. And that's what I think is interesting about the whole thing. I knew I needed to stop. I knew I wanted to stop, but I just kept going. And the reason why is because I had this part of my brain that made me do it over and over again. It was like something was electrocuting this part of my head and it was making my arm move like that. It was crazy. It was I, I felt like I was a rat in a cage. And when you electrocuted one part of its brain, it consumed sugar water or consumed chocolate or uh, Fruit Loops or something. It's like I didn't have any control and I think that was the scariest part of it all is that I felt out of control. I didn't feel like I could ever hit my my goals. I didn't I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be fit. I wanted to be lean. I wanted to to run and swim and um, Look good in a swimsuit, you know all that and I felt like I couldn't do it there, there was this giant wall in front of me and I could never find a way to get around it eventually I did but Imagine what I was thinking after seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years. Like, is, like, is this ever going to end? You ever feel that way? Then you're not alone. I've definitely been there, and you can recover from this. Trust me. My first binge wasn't planned. I wasn't planning to do that. I never. I didn't wake up and say, "I'm going to go binge on something." I never had the idea before. I remember I had finished a workout or a run. I found some old 
chocolate peanut butter protein bars out of, out of all the things, right? I was living with my mom at the time and I remember eating like five or six of them in a row. And, um, I remember it felt amazing, but it also felt really weird. I felt like I was, something had taken over my brain and it hijacked my brain and it was making me do things I didn't want to do. And, and so I remember thinking, wow, that was, that was crazy. I, I had never felt that before. I never felt out of control like that because I had always prided myself on self-control. Um, I had done a couple triathlons and I was, I had done a couple of triathlons. I was doing a lot of endurance sports and that takes a little bit of willpower. You have to push yourself to keep going. So um, I prided myself on that and now I couldn't control what I ate. And so the, after that first one, I don't remember what I thought. I thought it was only gonna happen once, but then it's like the next day and then the next week and then every weekend and then it was like three or four times a week. And once I started that habit, it was really hard to break, which is, really important that you understand that that it's really hard to break those kind of habits because it, they're really rewarding it was an addictive habit because it flooded my brain with endorphins i felt good in the moment but then when it was over i just i felt all of this guilt and all of this shame it's best not to create these habits in the first place that's what i'm saying so how did i finally stop that's the important part i don't recall there being one day when I just stopped. So I remember I had a patient who smoked for something like 37 years and he remembered the date of his last cigarette. So I wish it had been that clean. It wasn't like that. I went from binge eating and then I went from that to overeating and then just eating a little too much. And then eventually I just, I wasn't overeating at all, but that was, that took multiple months to reach that point. It's not like I was binge eating one day and then I was eating nothing but salad and tofu the next. It wasn't like that at all. The, the change was a lot more gradual than I predicted it would be. I, for a long time, I thought it would be this, this hard break or this overnight change. I thought one day I was gonna be a binge eater and then the next day I was gonna be a perfect eater. It wasn't really like that. Change is a little, uh, messier than that. I, I'd like to think that you can just change overnight. I suppose some people have. That wasn't true for me. And I don't think you should try that. I think what's much better is to try to make incremental changes. Just make one good decision today that you didn't make yesterday. And that's what you call the compound effect. Over time, those small decisions change and it's exponential. So it's not like if you only make one more good decision today, then you're a failure. What if you make another good decision tomorrow, then another good one, then another good one? Over time, that's a big change. These days, I don't like having large amounts of food in my body. I don't care how good it tastes. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care if it's healthy or unhealthy. I just, I don't like volume. I see a lot of people now, eating the one meal a day or OMAD as, as you call it, that's the big fitness trend. Just eat one meal a day because then your insulin is low for 23 hours and then you eat this giant meal and then your insulin levels go up a little bit and then drop again. I don't buy into that. If you're a binge eater or overeater, eating one meal a day is stupid. Like you shouldn't even go there. So eating one meal a day, it just, it makes me feel run down and it's really hard to do that and be in control. Not only that, but if you have a social life, that doesn't really make sense. And unless, you, unless you're in the kitchen or you work from home, one meal a day probably doesn't make sense. And then after that, do you really feel like doing anything after you put all that stuff in your body? How are you gonna feel after eating a giant meal? Are you gonna feel motivated to, to work or do anything? How do you feel after a Thanksgiving meal? You can try one meal a day. I don't recommend it. I hate having that much food in my stomach at one time. That's just a personal preference for me. I like to eat just enough to satisfy me and nothing more because I just, I hate that feeling. I remember those feelings. I remember the, the stomach distension. Uh, I remember the bloating. I remember the nausea. I remember the purging. I remember just having all that crap in my stomach and how bad I wanted to get it out. How do I eat today? I eat just pretty much everything. There's very few things that I don't eat anymore. Um, I still eat Cliff Bars. Sometimes this is just the most convenient thing to eat. Eating a well-prepared meal with 
a nice balance of protein and starch and vegetables. It's just not always possible to do that. We live real lives, we're on the go, um, we're on the train, we're at a conference, we're in a hotel, or we're traveling, or we're with other people. A lot of us have jobs where we're seeing patients in their homes, or we're real estate agents, or we're going from one place to another, or we're driving for a living. Eating well-prepared meals isn't always the best option, so sometimes we just have to settle for something else. Like I said, I don't eat a lot of peanut butter anymore, but if I get a craving for it, I'm not gonna deny myself. I don't deny myself anything. I know a lot of people like bright line eating, where you establish really strict rules like no flour, no sugar ever for the rest of my life. Some people can do that. I don't like that. I don't like saying never ever again. I don't think you have to go that far. If you feel like you have to do that, go ahead, do what's best for you. But if, some, if I want cookies or somebody makes me cookies, like my mom makes great chocolate chip cookies at Christmas, I'm not gonna say no. I, I want those. There's nothing inherently wrong with them. I really don't think any one food was ever the problem for me. I don't think Cliff Bars were my problem. I can't blame the Cliff Bar company. Um, I can't blame Luna Bars. It's the same company, but I can't blame any of the food manufacturers for that. I made those decisions myself. I chose to abuse myself. I chose to overload my body with thousands and thousands of calories in one sitting. I'm sorry I ever did that, but that was entirely my choice. Uh, the Mars company they didn't make me eat this whole bag, okay? Sometimes I challenge myself to eat just one M&M, um, just to prove to myself that I can have this stuff without binging on it. It's just proof that I have completely recovered from that and now I can show others how to do the same. Speaking of which, if you are struggling with overeating, binge eating, or bad eating habits, you can go to my website saneaters.com and you can find my free video and in that video I'll show you what you need to conquer cravings and regain control for good. If you want to speak with me personally, you can find a link in the description box below. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.